What's going on repair gang? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're finally repairing and reassembling that Poland 3400 counter vibe chainsaw. Now in this video today we are going to be putting on new piston rings. We're going to be doing a full carburetor repair kit and we are also putting on a brand new air filter. I'm not going to bore you to death with the cleaning so I'm just going to show you a little bit of the saw beforehand but without further ado ladies and gentlemen we are going to jump right into this repair. Okay, the very last thing for me to clean is these nuts and bolts, various nuts and bolts, and the carburetor. The carburetor, we're, the only thing we're not going to clean is the high and low, because we know when Walbro is facing up, high is going to be on the left, low is going to be on the right. So I'm going to take those out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this rebuilt under the way. There's going to be a link to this in the description, and I just want to say that that gasket did break, and like I said, I didn't. the rebuild doesn't come with a new gasket, so I made one. So I'll have a link in the description on where to get this gasket material. And let me know, look, I got the holes pretty good. Let me know if you guys want to see a tutorial on how to make the most ugliest gaskets you guys ever seen in your life. But with all that said, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can start doing this rebuild. First things first, you want to check. You got, you got your little piece in here that's going to go in the middle. This rebuild kit comes with two. So you make sure... Whichever one you're using, it lines up. See that one lines up? So we're going to use this one. This one, the holes don't line up. So this one is not used. So we'll put that aside. Maybe we can use it a different one. Now right here where your diaphragm is, you want to make sure that what material is this? This is the rubber one. This one comes with a paper one and a rubber floppy one. So this is rubber. We're using rubber. So we're going to put the paper one aside. Even though they're both the same thing. So I guess you could technically the holes line up, right? And now we got this right here. Our metering diaphragm. Holes on the top. So we're just going to put that like that. That's going to line up perfect. So there's our new metering diaphragm. Now see right here. We got that new in this kit microscopic screen there along with the big screen and that little tiny retainer clip a brand new needle which is all going in so we're going to start off first by putting this micro screen down here uh, let me see if we can't use the pick here and i'm going to use the gopro as my eyes that way you guys can kind of see what i'm seeing now I'm trying to get that screen perfectly in this little brass hole right there, just like that. Now from there I'm just going to push it down nice and gentle. Now this is, I don't do, I've never done a whole lot of these so we're going to figure out how to put this clip in without sending this one flying because if so we are S-O-L. And look, hey, we got it in there pretty good. Now I'm going to gently pry that down with my pick, not poking too hard. And that's good. So, we got our little other place. We're putting the new one in just because it's a new one. So we want to make sure it lines up. Obviously that don't line up. Obviously that don't line up, and there it goes, it lines up now. So from here, we want to take our new needle, we're going to put it in. We're going to take our spring, we're going to put our spring down there. I don't know if you guys can see this, I'm going to try to zoom in on the editing. Take our new needle. Put it in there. This is always the hardest part, ladies and gentlemen. Now from here, we just want to gently set it in without losing control. See, the problem is we're trying to maintain like four different things here. So now you're going to take your pick. You're going to pull up that spring. You're going to push this gasket around. 
we gotta figure out what's blocking so we gotta lift this up a little bit and I want to say we got it first try that is lifting the needle and everything so I think I think we got it ladies and gentlemen took a little bit of finesse but hey we got it that's always the hardest part on these two strokes is this needle most of the time you won't have this whole thing that i took off here it will just be a little screw right here that holds the keeper in and the needle and as you guys can see that lifts up it's all back together and from here we can put our gasket on and as you see this thing has an elevated little nipple there nipples are always good because you can put it in there and it holds it in place for you make sure it does yep it is coming back up so i think this rebuild kit this aftermarket rebuild kit which i'll have a link in the description is actually pretty good most of the time you're playing a guessing game because they just want to sell you something so they'll put fake descriptions but this one turned out to be pretty darn good and the only reason we're doing a rebuild kit instead of just replacing the carburetor is because this is such an old saw. I can't really find a new carburetor for it. And you never want to buy a used one because you never know. I tighten these down in a cross pattern. And I hand started all of them. If you guys seen that first, you do that so you don't cross thread anything. And there's only one way this can go on because of that nipple. So it gives you no room for air. Okay, we're almost done with this carburetor rebuild. So now we're going to put this screen in. We're going to do the same thing, but instead of using the pick, I'm going to use a punch. It has a dull edge so I don't accidentally poke through the screen. And just like that, we got that screen in there. Now we take our new rubber. We want to see how it was before there you go now see how it's perfectly lining up then you take your thing and you just do the exact same copy has your fuel flaps and everything else now you can see where the nipples go on the machine and see not lining up just take it off give it a flip it's lining up one way one way to do this now i don't know if you guys remembered what i said so first of all we changed all this stuff here even the needle that all came in the rebuild kit so that was all changed so you put those aside the rebuild kit came with extra two there's the information if you need it link in the description also for the gasket material and anything else i could think of now remember what i said walbro showing up high side low side we're gonna put these back in all the way and then we're gonna do one and a half turns out so we're gonna start it as much as we can by hand this is very important you do not go too hard with these as a matter of fact i go all the way in now this is supposed to come back so it's a little stiff so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add a little bit of three in one oil just on the spring mechanism here just a drop just to get it up in there. Now from here, all we're gonna do is just work that oil in. You can already see now, look how fast it's returning. And that's our carburetor done. So let's get to this reassemble here. As you see, all the bolts are clean. I got this saw looking cherry look at that look how clean it looks now ladies and gentlemen look at some of this here's this so clean almost brand new looking and like i said guys like i said cleaning is not necessary but it helps make it look a little bit better you guys remember how dirty the chain guard was all up in here with all that sawdust making it impossible to even see in here or clogging up this ingester or that flathead bit 
this piece was pretty ripe. We used to have paint and rust on the magnets there. That's no longer an issue. And probably the worst bit of it all was this. We had dirt and grime all up in every one of these grooves. And in here was so nasty and gross. Now it's nice and clean. I love when it looks clean. Looks good. Customer's going to be happy. We've got the carburetor rebuilt. We're going to change this nasty, ugly fill filter. And we're going to put new piston rings on. So that's what we're doing next is piston rings. Okay. Poland 3400. I'll have a link to these down in the description. That will not be an affiliate link because I think I got them from eBay. So if the link's not working, let me know and I'll see if I can't find another link because there might be a limited quantity of them. I don't know if it's a seller or not. I don't remember exactly who I bought it from. So I'll try to find one. I might have an Amazon one. So all you're going to do is peel them off nice and gentle. Try not to break them. Even though they are worn out, you still do not want to break them. Because if something happened and like I said, those parts are wrong. We're going to have a bad day if we can't, you know, get a good accurate measurement on these. So sometimes this is a pain in the ass. But all we got to do is just work our way out. We hop to that next ring holder. We're gonna twist it around it comes right out just like that ladies and gentlemen now let's just compare an old ring and a new ring and show you what the difference is so as you can see let me line up here you can see right there I think you can barely see it see that microscopic in there that's how much is causing this saw to have no compression as you see it's lined up right there on the other end but you can still see that little bit of microscopicness that means this piston ring is super worn out so we got new ones we're going to put the bottom one on first it's just going to go on the saw now if you look in here there are little stops there so that's where the gap's going to go over so like i said all you got to do is just stretch it out we got it on the first ring, hop down to the second ring, just like that. Now see right there, we're lined up with that hole. Look how good we touch it now when it, when it all compresses in. Next, set, next piston ring, find the gap, it's on this side. All we're going to do is just pop it in place. If you ever have a problem and you're changing your piston rings, don't worry about it. It's not a hard job. It's not a hard job. Piston rings are replaced. We're going to take our old rings and we're just going to keep them as a reminder of the nightmare that is a worn out chainsaw. There we go. Brand new piston rings. You could already tell this thing is going to purr like a, like a fucking tiger. Or here in Arizona, Bobcat. I've got a lot of those. I seen one the other day on the yard. Crazy. Could have killed me too. I could have not been making this video if a Bobcat killed me. I'm getting ready for the reassemble now, ladies and gentlemen. Everything is nice and clean. The saw is going to be so great when we're all said and done. The worst part is remembering where everything went. But what my other videos for so link in the info card if you guys need to go see that if you haven't seen that already so let's get to reassembling this saw now okay ladies and gentlemen the very first thing we'll do is put the head on so we already got it on past the piston rings and i could already feel the compression increase by just putting my finger over there and yeah you can hear it it's pretty good so this saw should run like a champ so we're just going to hand start everything. Remember, that's the number one rule in small engine repair. Okay, from here, what we're going to do now is we're going to put on these little holders to hold up this, um, this little wire here. So all we're going to need is our flathead and our little clips here. 
which are all nice and clean now. Start by putting the first one in. Okay, from here, we're gonna do fuel tank. Cause this has to go in like this before we put on the flywheel. So without further ado, I got to get some fuel line and we'll add some fuel to this. Okay, as you see, there's two holes here. One of them, in most two strokes, you'll have a return line. But all this is going to be is for pressure relief. So we just need a little bit going off. We got our regular fuel line here, which will always start by cutting it at a with an angle. I'll show you guys how to do it. We also got a brand new fuel filter. So with that angle cut, you just drive it in there. And then from there, you take your needle nose pliers. You reach right in there and you pull it just enough to get your fuel filter on there. And you just shove your fuel filter back in there. You're gonna pull it out just a little bit. And then from here, you just make sure it's on the ground. And you just want it slightly, you know, not too far. You don't want this to travel too far. Okay, so right there. So now we're gonna put it in here. Now, before we shove it all the way, the rest of the way in there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build that relief line. We're gonna make sure that this can go up to the carburetor. So we're gonna cut it about right here. And then we can put it on the notch here in a second. Now from here, we are going to put back on the flywheel. Flywheel is super easy to put on. Just find the notch, line it up with this wood roof key. And it's a wood roof key, not a flywheel key. It's the moon one. So if you do need a new one of those, I'll have a link in the description for some wood roof keys. You could put on some never sees if you really want to. I honestly don't think it's going to hurt nothing if we don't. Because 10 to 1, I'll probably never work on this saw again. You know, this individual saw. So, now you're just going to put the nut back on. Use something with a little oomph. For those of you who are just here to watch how to reassemble this, to put the flywheel key on, it is a 14 nut. Normal thread. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and put this fuel tank on, or this fuel cap. Now from here we can put the coil back on. I gotta fix this one little spot. Remember where we pulled it off? Right here on this clamp. So to be honest, we can just technically just shove it back in there and pinch it down. Which is probably what we're gonna end up doing, but I'm gonna strip it just a little bit more. So let me get my stripping tool. Okay, now that I got the wire stripped down some more, now we can make sure that this is gonna go on the right way. It should be like this, and then this comes up over here into this plastic clip, and then up into this metal clip. That's for the spark plug. Let's make sure we get this wire into the kill switch. Let me move you guys so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to twist this. Thread it through. Give it a pinch. Okay, now that I found the bolts, you take a business card or your actual feeler gauge, you line up the magnets, and it should, you should hear it, you know, clink together like that. But you want to put the spacer in there to make sure you get that right space for your spark. And this is before you tighten them all down. 
So there we go. Now bring it down. Let it click on. Now tighten in your bolts. And you should have a nice space in between that. Matter of fact, you could hear it clicking. Okay, perfect. Now we're putting back on this piece right here. Goes right there. This is gonna go for the handle too. Use the two bolts, put that piece back on. Now it's time to put back on the clutch. So we got that washer there. We got our bearing. We got our clutch. We got our plate. And now we're gonna put this on. And remember, it's reverse thread. So you're just gonna hand thread it. And then you're gonna take your 19 millimeter. Take your impact, put it on reverse. Hold your flywheel. Now that the clutch is on, we are good to go to the next part, which is gonna be putting on. Okay, now we're gonna do the muffler. We're gonna start with the top two bolts. Remember this goes on first, right there. It's gonna be part of the shield, cause then it all goes on together like so at the end. So we start by putting this on. It only goes on one way. And just the top two bolts first. So, I mean, the top one and the bottom one, they're 10 millimeter, hand thread them first. They couldn't make it easy for us. I forgot to put the, put the spark arrestor back on. Cover plate first. Then thread them in. See, it's a pain in the ass with all these plates and the way they made this muffler here. Line it up. It only goes on one way. Hand start them. There you go. Perfect. Muffler is on. Okay, so that's about all the hard parts done. So now I'm gonna finally fully just put together the saw, add a spark plug, and we're gonna take it out, cut some wood, make sure everything's running fine. So with the magic of editing it, again, next time you see the saw, it should be done. I'm also gonna use a 50 to one mix, zero ethanol gas. It's that pre-made can you can buy at Home Depot. So without further ado, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Poland 3400 counter vibe. Looking good. Looking good. Okay, repair gang, I got this saw running. I got it tuned up, purring like a kid. Let's cut some damn wood. I'm gonna have my brother, he's Nathan. What up? He's gonna be filming. Let's get going. Let's start this puppy up. Switch on.
As always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I want to give a huge shout out to my channel members, AJP Garden Machines and Fit Dad Chris. Join the repair gang today by clicking that little join button down below. If you guys want to see the rest of this chainsaw, I'm going to have that video up right here. Also, right under that, that's what YouTube thinks you should watch next. And don't forget to hit that little subscribe button. Have a good day. See ya.